There aren't many creatures on earth that if you literally slice them in half, don't die screaming. Or at least stay dead. But like real-life hydra heads, starfish don't just survive dismemberment. They come back stronger. Clam fishermen off the coast of Narragansett Bay learnt this the hard way by turning a few hundred starfish pests into tens of thousands. Starfish were crawling across the Narragansett Bay seafloor, prying open their clam shells with their arms and eating the clams alive. So the fishermen decided to chop up the starfish, which, considering the starfish couldn't really fight back, seemed like a perfect solution. But in just a few weeks, the starfish returned and in even greater numbers. The seafloor was so dense with starfish that locals described the starfish population in the bay as plague-like. The fishermen thought they were wiping them out, but instead it helped the infestation increase exponentially. How is it possible that a starfish can not only heal but multiply itself just off of severed limbs? How much starfish is required before a new starfish can grow out of it? And if cutting these guys apart won't actually kill them, what will? Despite their name, starfish are not actually fish. They don't have gills, scales, fins, or even a backbone. They don't have eyes, at least in the traditional sense. They don't have blood or a heart, which is why a lot of people call them sea stars. Instead, starfish belong to the group Echinoderms, a phylum of marine invertebrates that also includes sea urchins and sea cucumbers. There are over 2,000 species of starfish scattered across the world's oceans. Most of them live on the sea floor, crawling slowly across rocks and coral using hundreds of tiny tube feet that stick out from the underside of their arms. And while the classic star shape is probably what comes to mind, with five symmetrical arms radiating out like spokes on a wheel, not all starfish look like that. Species like the sunflower sea star can have up to 24 arms. Others, like the Labidiaster annulatus found near Antarctica, can have 50 or more arms stacked like petals, moving in a slow, almost alien crawl across a seabed. It's beautiful in a strange way, and also kind of horrifying, because if a five-armed starfish can multiply into five separate starfish, what happens when you cut up one of these? Technically, each individual arm can become a whole new starfish if it has a piece of the central disc. At first glance, a starfish looks like a collection of arms stuck together at the middle. No head, no spine, and no brain. But that middle, the place where all the arms meet, isn't just structural. This is the central disc, functioning as the starfish's core. It contains the mouth, which faces downward. It contains the radial nerve ring, which connects each arm and controls movement. It also contains portions of the stomach, which, by the way, can actually be everted, pushing out through the mouth to digest prey externally. But biologically, the central disc is more than just anatomy. It's a regeneration hub. That's where the key developmental tissues reside, the ones that hold the instructions for making a starfish from scratch. Technically, when a starfish regenerates, it's not just growing new limbs, it's rebuilding a body plan. One that requires nervous tissue, vascular canals, skeletal plates, digestive structures, and coordination across a five-ray symmetry system. If an arm is severed that doesn't include any part of that central region, it dies. Plain and simple, the tissue might twitch or move for a while, but it won't actually grow anything new. But if the cut is just right, if just a sliver of the central disc comes with the arm, it changes everything. Some species are especially good at this. Take Linkia multiflora, the comet star. It naturally drops arms which slowly regenerate new bodies over the course of several months. In captivity, a regenerating limb can take around 10 to 12 months to fully develop into an adult-sized starfish. And in the wild where food and temperature conditions aren't as predictable, it can take years. And yet, the result is a perfect clone. Not an offspring, not a relative. A living, walking duplicate, genetically identical to the starfish it came from. But remember, this isn't reproduction, it's replication. 
So if you're looking at a species with 50 arms and you cut each one off in just the right way, you could get 50 new starfish. That's 2,450 new arms in total, each original arm growing 49 new arms. Now imagine cutting those 50 new starfish again. If every one of those 2,500 arms is carefully separated with a piece of the central disc, you'll end up with 2,500 starfish and a whopping total of 125,000 arms. Cut these apart, nearly 6.25 million arms just from the original 50. And as you can see, this turns into a literal nightmare of limbs pretty quickly. Thankfully, biology puts limits on this, which is why starfish haven't taken over the entire world yet. In practicality, the central disc isn't infinite, and the precision required to make every arm viable is nearly impossible in any normal environment. Most of those fragments don't survive. Many end up rotting or stopping halfway through regeneration. But even if a fraction of these arms regenerate, that's still an explosion of new starfish. One that's hard to control and nearly impossible to undo. But how exactly do they do it? What happens inside the body of a starfish that lets it regenerate its entire body? Let's imagine a starfish loses an arm. This could be due to a predator, a rock slide, or a self-amputation to evade the enemy. In any way, if the arm is gone, the body doesn't panic, it gets to work. The first priority is damage control. Specialized cells flood the site of the injury to seal the wound. Starfish don't have blood, so instead they rely on their water vascular system, a network of seawater-filled canals that help with movement and internal pressure. This system has to be resealed quickly to prevent fluid loss and maintain basic body function. Then something remarkable happens. The cells near the injury begin to change. In a process called de-differentiation, mature skin cells, muscle cells, and even nerve cells lose their specialized roles and revert to stem cell-like state. These reprogrammed cells are capable of dividing, migrating, and transforming into whatever the body needs next. A small lump begins to form where the arm was lost. This is called a regenerative bud. But it's the first visible sign that rebuilding has begun. Over time, the bud grows and elongates. Structures inside the arm, such as the radial nerve, the ambulacral groove, and the hard calcified plates known as ossels begin to form again. Eventually, new tube feet extend out. With enough time, a fully functional arm replaces the old one. This process is slow. In some species, a lost arm might take six months to regrow. In others, especially larger species or those living in colder environments, it can take years. And during that time, the starfish still has to survive with fewer limbs, making feeding and movement more difficult. But this is only one direction of regeneration, when a body heals a lost arm. Now let's look at the reverse. What if only the arm survives? If that severed limb includes part of the central disc, even a small portion, it doesn't die. Instead, it begins forming something new. This time, it's not just an arm that grows back. The arm begins to regenerate the entire body. At the site of the injury, tissues begin to organize into a new central disc. Gradually, new arms form around it. Internal systems, including a nerve ring, mouth, and water vascular canals begin to develop. Over time, this limb builds an entirely new starfish, complete with all the working parts of the original. The WNT pathway helps determine body polarity, guiding cells to form the right structures in the correct orientation. What's up, what's down, and what's the center? The notch pathway and bone morphogenetic protein, also called BMT pathway, assist in tissue differentiation controlling the growth of nerves, muscles, and the skeletal structures. Chemical signals guide the process from start to finish. Cells communicate across gradients of signaling molecules, responding to concentrations that tell them what to become, where to move, and where to stop dividing. It's a slow and delicate process. Many things can interrupt it. Bacterial infection, physical damage, lack of nutrients. But if all goes well, the result is a fully formed, genetically identical starfish that started from just a fragment of the original. A severed limb, against all odds, becomes a living copy.
And that's where the regeneration stops being just survival and starts to resemble something closer to rebirth. But this comes with cost. Because while cloning might seem like the ultimate backup plan, nature rarely gives out gifts without strings attached. When a starfish regenerates from a limb, it doesn't just rebuild tissue, it copies its entire genetic blueprint, exactly as it was. No mixing, no reshuffling, and no new combinations. The resulting individual is a perfect clone of the original. And that's the exact problem. Cloning, also called asexual reproduction, produces zero genetic diversity. It creates a population made up of near-identical individuals, which sounds fine until the environment changes. If a disease sweeps through, or the water warms up, or oxygen levels shift, a clone population has no variation to fall back on. If one dies, many others likely will too. Sexual reproduction, on the other hand, is messy, slow, and biologically expensive. It requires two individuals, gamete production, fertilization, larval stages, and sometimes years before maturity. But in return, it shuffles DNA. Each offspring carries a unique genetic fingerprint, some stronger, some weaker, but all different. That difference matters. In a world of shifting oceans, changing temperatures, and unpredictable predators, genetic variation is survival insurance. Cloning has none of that. It's fast and efficient, yes, but it's brittle. It also puts a tremendous strain on the individual. Regenerating an entire body isn't just energy intensive, it's risky. Cells must divide precisely. Structures must form in the correct orientation. The immune system has to hold off infection during every single stage of the process. Any mistake in timing, signaling, or structure can lead to malformed limbs or outright death. And if conditions aren't ideal, if food is scarce, if temperatures drop, if the ocean gets murky with algae or pollutants, the whole process may stall or fail completely. And this isn't just theory or speculation. The risks of cloning became terrifyingly real in the early 2010s, when the Pacific Ocean was hit by one of the most devastating marine epidemics ever recorded. Sea Star Wasting Syndrome It began quietly. A few sea stars along the Pacific Northwest were seen with small white lesions, minor injuries it seemed. Then the lesions spread, their arms began curling, their bodies started deflating. Limbs tore away from the central disc without resistance. Within days, they literally dissolved into piles of tissue. And it wasn't just one species. It hit over 20 different kinds of starfish from California to Alaska. Entire populations collapsed. In some areas, over 90% of individuals were wiped out in a matter of weeks. Researchers traced the likely cause to a denso virus possibly triggered or intensified by warming ocean temperatures. But what stood out more was how uniformly vulnerable the starfish were. Limited genetic diversity in the starfish populations left their immune defenses similarly vulnerable. When the disease came, there was no variation. Evolution hadn't created enough variety to withstand the hit. And so millions of clones collapsed in unison. While most sea stars actually reproduce sexually, more than asexually, some species do rely on cloning. And when they do, it makes them even more vulnerable to exactly this kind of sudden collapse. Despite their mind-blowing ability to regrow limbs and clone entire bodies, it isn't the ultimate superpower it seems. The same way these starfish multiplied and took over the clams in the Narragansett Bay is the same way that all collapse together when disease struck. So even though this ability makes you seem nearly impossible to get rid of, it may just be the reason your entire population falls all at once. If you enjoyed this one, this one's about a parasite even harder to get rid of than starfish, and way creepier.